Hi everyone, this is Maverick Paul, the Chemistry Guru. Now in today's video, we want to discuss how to make use of Hess's Law to determine enthalpy changes for reactions. So let's take a look at today's exercise. The diagram illustrates the energy changes of a set of reactions involving R, S, T and U. So which of the following statements are correct? So statement number one, enthalpy change for the transformation R to U is endothermic. Statement number two, the enthalpy change for the transformation S to T is plus 226 kilojoule per mole. Statement number three, the enthalpy change for the transformation S to U is plus 151 kilojoule per mole. So how do we approach this exercise and how do we determine the enthalpy change for all this transformation? Now we actually make use of Hess's law which states that the enthalpy change for a reaction is independent of the pathway taken from the initial state to the final state. So if you have a reaction involving A to B, the enthalpy change involved for A to B is actually the same if we take a shorter path versus a bigger path. So as long as the reactant and the product it is the same, then the enthalpy change for the process, regardless of the pathway that it is taking, will effectively be the same. So let us just use this exercise to try to illustrate this and to understand Hess's law and how do we make use of it for application. So let us take a look at statement one. Now statement number one involving NW change for the transformation R to U is endothermic. So R to U, this is the process. R is here, U will be here. So the direct path involving NW change of reaction from R to U will be here as shown as enthalpy change for reaction number one. Now, Hess's law states that the enthalpy change involving this reaction from R to U actually will be the same if you go by a different path. We can go by R reaction to give me T, T then to U. You notice ultimately the reactant is still R, the product will still end off with U. So Hess's law is saying that the enthalpy change involving R to U directly and the enthalpy change involving R to T, then T to U, the enthalpy change is exactly the same because it is independent of the path taken from my initial to my final state. So this also means that the enthalpy change involving R to U is the same as the enthalpy change involving R to S, then S to U. But of course, we don't have information involving this enthalpy change from S to U. So in this case, what we will be focusing on is this relationship here, what we have highlighted here in yellow. So we will use this three state involving R to U, R to T to U to work out the relationship. We can actually make use of a vector sum here. So the sum of all the clockwise arrows will be equal to the sum of all the counterclockwise arrow. So if I have my clockwise direction here, so you notice enthalpy change for reaction number one is actually following the clockwise direction. So this is a clockwise arrow. Enthalpy change plus 92 kilojoule per mole from R to T is actually a counterclockwise arrow. So this is counterclockwise. Then involving enthalpy change of T to U minus 75 kilojoule per mole. This is also a counterclockwise arrow. This will be counterclockwise. Again, if I look at the cycle here, and this will be a clockwise direction, we should be able to figure out Delta H1 is clockwise, the remaining two arrows will be counterclockwise. All right. So what I can do is I can combine this together in the equation. Total clockwise arrow equals to total counterclockwise arrow. So delta H involving reaction number one will be plus 92 plus a minus 75. This will give me a positive value, a plus 17 kilojoule per mole. So this means then statement number one is true. Your enthalpy change for reaction number one, converting R to U, it is a positive value, it is an endothermic term. So this is involving statement number one. Number one is correct. Next, let us consider statement number two. Now statement number two, enthalpy change for transformation S to T is a positive 226 kilojoule per mole. So S to T will be here. S to T is involving this arrow here, involving enthalpy change for reaction number two. Again, what we can use is we try to look out for a cycle where information is given. So again, involving S to T, the enthalpy change according to Hess's law is equivalent to S to R, R to T. Right? I can also say that the enthalpy change involving S to T is also 
S to U, then U to T. But again, we don't have information involving S to U, so again, we will ignore this portion here. So let us focus on this triangle here, or this cycle here, where we have all these enthalpy change terms. So what we do, same thing is, we consider the clockwise direction, and we want to make use of vector sum, all the total clockwise arrow equals to all the total counter clockwise arrow. So this is my clockwise direction. And you notice, enthalpy change minus 134 kilojoule per mole from R to S, this is a clockwise arrow. Enthalpy change involving reaction number two, this arrow here is also a clockwise arrow. Then your R to T, enthalpy change involving plus 92 kilojoule per mole, this is a counter clockwise arrow. So what we can do is, we can put all the clockwise arrow on one side of the equation, counter clockwise arrow on the other side. So minus 134, which will be here on the left hand side, plus enthalpy change for reaction number two is equal to plus 92. So I have an equation involving enthalpy change for reaction number two. Basically, I just need to bring the minus 134 over to the right hand side. So for it, delta H2 is a positive 226 kilojoule per mole. And again, we are showing that statement number two is correct. The enthalpy change for the conversion from S to T is plus 226 kilojoule per mole. Finally, let us consider statement three. Now statement three, it says that the enthalpy change for transformation S to U, which is this unknown term here, is a plus 151 kilojoule per mole. So this, if I call this enthalpy change involving reaction number three, I want to determine S to U. Again, according to Hess's law, enthalpy change involving S to U is the same as S to R, R to T, then T to U. So if I do this directly, in this direction, versus I do one big loop, the enthalpy change involved is essentially the same. But again, usually what I prefer to do is, I just consider the total clockwise arrow equals the total counter clockwise arrow. So my clockwise direction again is here. So this is the clockwise direction. And minus 134 kilojoule per mole, this R to S, this is a clockwise arrow. S to U, it is also a clockwise direction. You notice R to T, the plus 92 kilojoule per mole, this is counterclockwise. T to U, minus 75 kilojoule per mole, this is also counterclockwise. So again, what I can do is all the clockwise arrows, I put it on one side. Counterclockwise arrow, I put it on the other side. And therefore, my minus 134 plus delta H3 will be equal to plus 92 minus 75. So I have an equation involving enthalpy change for reaction number three. Again, I can solve for it. I will be able to get a positive 151 kilojoule per mole. And again, I can show then this enthalpy change for transformation S to U. It is the correct value. It is plus 151 kilojoule per mole. So effectively, today's exercise is fairly simple. It actually hinges on this idea involving Hess's law. So we do need to make use of it to do interpretation when we have an energy cycle, so we make use of Hess's law where it states that enthalpy change of a reaction is not affected by the path taken from the initial state to a final state. So usually we will have one enthalpy change term which is the unknown, which we want to determine. So we want to make use of a combination of other enthalpy change terms which is known, and try to put everything together into an energy cycle. Then once we have the energy cycle, Usually what we will do is we will use the total clockwise arrow equals to the total counter clockwise arrow. Then we decide based on the energy cycle which reactions are clockwise, which reactions are counterclockwise, separate them into this expression. Total clockwise arrow equals to total counter clockwise arrow solved for the unknown term. So usually this is how we make use of Hess's law to determine enthalpy change terms for unknown reactions. So if you have learned something useful from this video, please give me the thumbs up, like this video, and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more weekly video lessons. That's all for now. I'll see you next week.